Of course, Port Moody isn't the only city celebrating in Centennial this year. Port Coquitlam is also 100 years young. On January 4th, the Port Coquitlam Rec Center was the site of the kickoff party for their year-long celebrations. The evening featured a community dinner, sporting demonstrations, and information booths for a variety of community groups. Of course, Tri-Cities Community Television was there. My name is Brian Ness from the Port Coquitlam Heritage and Cultural Society, uh, Poco Heritage, we are Carlos House now. And uh, we're uh, over just over here, we're opening up a new centre called uh, Heritage at Lee Square. Uh, we're having an opening on March the 7th of 2013. That'll be our opening for the public from uh, 3 to 8 p.m. And we're going to have a little ceremony there to open up our uh, new, it's uh, basically a display centre, like a, a museum basically, yeah. So, so we're, uh, the public's invited to come out for that. And uh, what we're having here this evening here, we're having a bit of an evening uh, for the city. It's the, uh, the, the launch party for 2013. It's the, um, it's the uh, centennial of the city. It was founded and um, incorporated on March the 7th of 1913. So we're, this year we're, we're, uh, the city is uh, putting together a bunch of events along with uh, the Spirit Committee and uh, the Heritage to, to celebrate that. Ringette is a Canadian sport invented in, in uh, 1963, uh, primarily to um, offer uh, girls, an alternative to hockey. It's a it's a fast-paced competitive sport. It looks a lot like hockey is often confused as hockey for girls, but that's where the similarity ends. Uh, the rules are completely different. It's based based on speed and skill, and it's a t it's a team sport. The the players need to rely on each other. They need to know the entire game, not just their position. Their uh, some of the rules designed to keep it fast include uh, the ring must be passed across each blue line. There's a limit to uh, three players from each team in the offensive or defensive zone at any one time. So it's, uh, it forces the team to play over the entire surface of the ice and to continuously be ready to receive the ring and to know where you're passing the ring and set up plays. So it's a, it's a game that requires speed, skill, and, and it's a real thoughtful game. They really need to think on their feet and it keeps it really fast. Today is a great opportunity for us because not only is it Port, uh, Port Coquitlam's 100th birthday, but this is also the kickoff to Ringette Canada uh, and their 50th birthday. This year uh, there's going to be a Ringette, basically a Ringette Canada roadshow uh, throughout the entire year, uh, focusing on uh, Ringette and you know bringing as much attention as possible as we turn 50. Port Coquitlam was always interested in uh, fire safety within the community. But uh, because it's the 100th celebration for Port Coquitlam, uh, I decided to uh, bring all the, the oldest um, equipment and shirts, as you see, and pictures uh, to make a, kind of a retro display. That, uh, as you see, it says uh, VFD on it. Uh, Port Coquitlam, I believe, uh, went from a fully volunteer uh, service to a uh, professional paid uh, service in the late 70s. And uh, I drummed that one up as well as uh, a few of the other ones just to, you know, just to show the transition throughout the years. And also, uh, since, I'm, since I'm showing you this stuff, uh, this was McAllister, the old McAllister Fire Hall, the number one fire hall. Um, it, uh, it went out of service in 1991. Uh, now we have the new fire hall in, uh, on Broadway Street. We're here to promote uh, Poco Hockey and uh, let everybody know that it's uh, fun and safe hockey for kids of all ages from ages 5 to 20. And uh, to come out and show our community and show what our rinks look like and uh, just let everybody know that it's fun and safe and uh, we have a great time here. We're into our 42nd year, and we're a nonprofit organization that promotes um, hockey in our small town of Port Coquitlam. And uh, we have two really successful tournaments that happen each year. One is at Christmas time, which runs for our hockey two, three, and four uh, kids, along with our Adam kids. Which uh, and then our tournament in the spring is uh, is a new midget bantam tournament that we run every spring and they're uh, both really successful tournaments. We are set up as um, the children and tots department for this event. Um, we feel children are an important part of the city so we like to promote um, lots of things what the children do. Uh, as the children and tots department for the city we provide play, we provide recreation activities, we provide activities in the school like Beyond the Bell. We have uh, jelly bean dances for the kids as they get a little older and we 
have lots of parent and taught activities and a play school or preschool um, setting. So today we're just um, advertising, we have a little marketing department where we're showing off our new programs for the, the, the upcoming season. And then we're just doing a very simple craft just to get the kids, we like lots of hands on and we always find the children are very creative. So they're very simple crafts, they're not, um, it's where we want to see the children be creative. We're providing snowflakes because it's kind of a, a winter theme. And then we're providing markers so the children can use their expressive thing. We also have some little activities for the children. They can build the, with the Duplo. We have a hopscotch. We have where they can just do creative jumping and stuff. And then way over in the corner, we have some gross motor big activities. Come and join us. Um, Poco is, we're very pro-family and pro-kids. And we always love to see them at all our activities. Thank you. The Spirit Committee was formed in 2005 and it is made up of a wide variety of residents that live from, in Port Coquitlam and it was to help generate and engage our community in the Winter Olympics in uh, 2010. And we also were looking at ways that we could provide uh, legacy opportunities and we've done this over the years and we're very pleased to be part of this celebration this year. On behalf of the uh, Spirit Committee, I would like to welcome to you to the city of Port Coquitlam's 100th birthday launch. Um, we're really looking forward for this exciting evening, and I would like to thank our fellow task members and city staff who have worked very, very hard over the last year and a half in putting uh, a year-long celebration together. I also want to acknowledge Mayor and Council for their continuous support and believing in our vision as a community. And I would also like to thank everyone here today in attendance for coming out tonight and hope that you will spread the word that we have a year-round um, event of celebrations. Please check out the City of Port Coquitlam's 100th birthday website to stay updated on all the events and activities planned today. I hope you enjoy the evening and look forward to you to seeing you at future events. Thank you. This is such an exciting time for us. And you know, Renee talked about our spirit committee. The 100th anniversary of Port Coquitlam is all driven by volunteers in our community. Renee is the leader of that group and we're just so thankful for you, Renee, and our community that makes it such a wonderful place. I also want to say thank you uh, to the many volunteers tonight that are here, our city staff, our firefighters. I also want to say thank you to Poco Inn and & Suites and Corner Sports, Corner Sports for their contributions into making this evening a reality. Although the celebration is about Port Coquitlam's birthday, we also must acknowledge the first settlers here. Our Coquitlam First Nations Band called this home, called this place home for thousands of years. But the first white settlers were here in 1853, the Alexander McLean family. And over the next 60 years, many people came to Port Coquitlam for prosperity. In, 2000, or in 1911, the Coquitlam Star newspaper headline said, what Pittsburgh is to the United States, so will Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, be to Canada. And in 1912, the mayor of Coquitlam, James Mars, and council applied to the provincial government to incorporate Port Coquitlam. And on March 7th, we received that incorporation. Mayor Mars resigned as mayor of Coquitlam and became the first mayor of our great city. At that time, there was 1,500 people living here in Port Coquitlam. And in fact, on that inauguration day in 1913, they had big dreams for Port Coquitlam. And Mayor Mars proclaimed that in three years, Port Coquitlam would have 10,000 people living here. In our early history, we we're filled with pioneer families, such as the McLeans, the Atkins, Chambers, Blacks, Kelly, Mars, Roland, Welcher, Hawthorns, Rowley, Gaylers, Greers, Lee, Kilmers, the Millens, Mackenzies, and of course, the Forests. However, the next decade, the city went through some tough times with the Great War, the flu influenza, a major fire that wiped out our downtown, a flood, and of course the Great Depression. It wasn't until the 50s that we started to take off as a community. And in fact, in the 1950s, Port Coquitlam was the fastest growing community in southwestern British Columbia. 
And at the beginning of 1960, we had 8,111 people living in Port Coquitlam. Industry was coming, coming to Port Coquitlam and was fuel, fueling a building boom. In 1962, City Council spent $450,000 and built the Shaughnessy Underpass, connecting North and South Port Coquitlam. In 1970, the Poco Trailblazers started our crown jewel, the Travelay Poco Trail, which thousands of residents use each month. This recreation complex was built in 1970, when our population was 19,500. We continue to grow and urbanize over the next two decades. In 1986, there were 29,000 people that lived in Port Coquitlam. Mary Hill Bypass opened, which opened up the major industrial growth in the Mary Hill Industrial Park and brought thousands of new residents to Port Coquitlam. Port Coquitlam has one of the youngest average ages of, of people in British Columbia. Over the past hundred years, sports, religion, and culture have been major pillars of our community. So I'm honored on behalf of City Council to officially launch Port Coquitlam's centennial celebration. And happy birthday, Port Coquitlam.